I see a lot of familiar faces here. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, we try to do these underwriting webinars probably once a quarter just to make sure that we stay on top of any and all guidance updates that, that come down the pipe for us. Um, for those of you that may be new, we're the Commonwealth Group. We are a fulfillment service provider. We offer contract underwriting, processing, quality control, condo project reviews, um, LOS admin. You can see the screen here. And we offer a variety of consulting services as well. We don't have minimums and we're we're very customizable in the sense that we can be exactly what, what you want us to be. If you um, need a little help underwriting um, and you just need somebody to supplement your existing team, we can do that. If you need a group that is your only source of underwriting, we can be that as well. It's um, very customizable in the sense that we don't have minimums. So if you don't send us anything in a given month, uh, you don't get a bill from us. Or if you send us a bunch of files, we'll get them back to you within 48 hours. So uh, with that, I've got the head of our underwriting department, Wes Parker here. Uh, Wes is a very experienced underwriter with over 10 years of experience in the business. He's going to go over a slideshow that we put together today of all the guidance updates that uh, have kind of been coming out since December, I guess, Wes, but really go into effect here in March. So we're right. going to make sure that everybody is prepared. Great. Hey, everybody. Um, nice to uh, virtually meet you. Um, <laughs> we're going to be going through a couple of things here, like what Martin said. Basically, we're taking uh, the lender letters that have come out or the guidance updates, particularly the ones that just dropped in February. Uh, if you haven't read through them, we're going to be uh, just going through all of those and, and really just breaking them down uh, into the most important things um, that that came out of them that feel the most relevant to what we do. There's always some things like, hey, we changed the definition of this or we changed this particular word over here or we didn't like this. Um, there's a few of those things that I omitted just because it seemed a little senseless to go through all of that. And right now I know everybody is trying to make the most of their uh, their lunch break. Uh, so what we're going to do is to get started and go through a few of these. So we're going to start with updates from Fannie Mae. Uh, this uh, this very first one is basically talking about how uh, they're going to begin offering value acceptance plus, plus property data on condo case files effective immediately. Um, if you are one of the lucky people that actually understand value acceptance plus property data, uh, consider yourself fortunate. Um, that whole uh, issue of uh, property inspection waivers getting remonikered into value acceptance and then value acceptance plus property data to offer a whole nother level of value acceptance to extend to your borrower uh, is admittedly a little confusing for a lot of people uh, in the Commonwealth Group within our underwriting. We get a lot of lenders that will run across value acceptance plus property data and assume that it's just your traditional old property inspection waiver uh, and please be careful and know that it is not uh, that can cause you quite a bit of problems um, if you don't include all of the property data uh, that Fannie Mae uh, would like for you to include in addition to that we have a lot of lenders that by the time you acquire the property data you realize that it could have been just as easy if not faster to go ahead and just get a full appraisal uh, and so a lot of lenders have been choosing lately that we work with to go ahead and just do uh, a full appraisal regardless uh, this is out there that the value acceptance on property plus property data on condo case files is going to begin effective immediately uh, please know that you're still required to confirm that the condo project is eligible in cpm uh, this one kind of seems like a no-brainer to me uh, you can read it and see it here you may have read it and thought huh yeah, no brainer. So seven and 10 year arms, uh, there's just a little clarification that the borrower must be qualified using no less than the note rate for seven and 10 year arms. So you can't give your brother a 3% rate if he's on a seven or 10 year arm. Um, you have to do no less than the note rate. So uh, this is 
going back to the initial ability to use the note rate versus the fully indexed rate uh, that was all updated in June of last year. Uh, everybody used to have to use the fully indexed rate and calculate the fully indexed rate, which was uh, a process in and of itself. And then Fannie Mae came out and said, hey, you can use the initial note rate instead of having to do the fully indexed rate uh, because we are stuck in this affordability vortex that we can't seem to get out of. Um, so this is just a little clarification. If you're using one of these seven or 10 year arm products uh, that you can't use less than the note rate uh, whenever you're doing the qualification for those borrowers. This next one is regarding manufactured uh, housing with cash out refinances. I found this one in particular uh, to be relevant to what we are seeing uh, in terms of some of these cash outs that are coming through. Uh, manufactured housing condos seem to be kind of the last frontier as, a, as far as affordable housing in a lot of areas of the country. Uh, so we are seeing manufactured housing tick up, at least uh, in our, our business within our lenders. Uh, the maximum term has been updated from 20 years now to 30 years, so you can go a full 30 uh, on a cash out, and that is effective immediately. Um, just as it has been, single wide manufactured homes remain ineligible. Uh, for cash out refinances. With non-traditional credit, uh, we have acceptable housing payments uh, that are further defined. Uh, as you can see here, as far as rent, uh, that's fees paid to a landlord or property management company. You can acquire uh, proof of that uh, for as an acceptable housing payment. In terms of a privately held mortgage loan, which uh, we have seen an uptick in this uh, as it comes across my desk at least, um, housing payments not reported on the credit bureaus, obviously, because it's privately held, such as contract for deed payments and other <laughs> similar arrangements, provided the payments are related to the borrower's residence. Uh, and then real estate taxes, where payments are made on a principal residence, regardless of payment frequency. Uh, and that's for homes owned free and clear. And we've all heard and read the stories about how many homes nowadays are owned free and clear. Uh, all of these things with non-traditional credit are effective immediately. For use of business income, less than 25% ownership. Uh, we don't see this a lot, but we do see this. Um, there are a few things here regarding liquidity that I found to be uh, helpful. One is uh, in regard to how the lender uh, can use an alternate method other than a quick ratio or the current ratio to confirm business liquidity. Uh, if you're going to use an alternate way or alternate documentation, uh, just document your rationale and then include whatever way you have documented that the business is actually liquid, you know, whether you have uh, an LOE from the business accountant or whatever. Uh, there's a, a few things that we could discuss if you have questions, uh, but a K-1 in and of itself cannot be used to support business liquidity. Uh, if business taxes are provided, the lender is not required to analyze liquidity. Obviously, we could be able to see uh, in the business taxes at that point. Uh, to use K-1 income, the income must have actually been distributed to the borrower consistent with the level of income being used to qualify, or the business has adequate liquidity to support the withdrawal of earnings. All Fannie Mae is wanting to do here is to make sure that the numbers that are on a piece of paper actually made it to the bank account of the borrower in question. So uh, there's a, a few ways that we can do that. Just make sure uh, and understand kind of their rationale behind putting that uh, out for us in this latest uh, update. In regard to property insurance, uh, in addition to actual cash value coverage being unacceptable policies that limit, depreciate, reduce, or otherwise settle losses at anything other than a less excuse me, other than a replacement cost basis are not acceptable. Uh, the lender and servicer are responsible for verifying that the coverage amount meets Fannie Mae's requirements as of the current insurance policy effective date. Make sure that you have adequate property insurance. All right, we are switching over to the latest Freddie Mac bulletin, um, trust income. Uh, we will run into uh, uh, every now and then, we don't see it a whole lot, but we have seen it uh, in 2024 come through. Uh, there are different types of 
of ways that you can get trust income taken care of. Um, and, and this is highlighted in the guide for those of you that need a, a little bit of a refresher or haven't seen it come through. Uh, however, in, in terms of what they've updated here, when there is a predetermined fixed payment, let's say somebody gets X amount of dollars per month, uh, you must document receipt of the income for the most recent one year period. Uh, this is in uh, an update to not needing to see uh, receipt of the income. Uh, you actually have to do receipt uh, see receipt of the income for the most recent one year. So make sure that you are doing that or that could cause problems down the road when you go to sell the loan. Uh, documentation of continuance for all trust income types. So when the borrower is the trustee, a letter from the trustee is not acceptable. So if you are the trustee, you can't say yes. In fact, I do get this. So uh, a third party is going to be your best friend on that one. So an accountant, you know, if you don't have an accountant friend, you should probably always have one. You would go to an accountant that deals with this account in particular or deals with this trust in particular uh, that could verify as a third party uh, that that is true. With asset documentation, uh, verifications that are generated electronically by a financial institution are not required to contain the title, signature, and phone number of a representative of the financial institution. That is a new update. Uh, with ACE eligibility, we talked about some uh, inspection waiver things with Fannie Mae. Freddie Mac has this update where LPA will begin offering ACE appraisal waivers for cash out mortgages. There are two limits to this. The max LTV will be 70% for primary residences and the max LTV will be 60% for secondary residences. If you happen to go over that or your LTV were to change, you may lose that appraisal waiver if it exceeds 70 for primary and 60 for secondary. So as you set up these loans and it's a cash out, you have an appraisal waiver, just a heads up that to go back and check your findings. Always check your findings uh, because it is a possibility that you cross that LTV threshold and end up losing that appraisal waiver. For appraisal photos, they have updated this to add interior photos in addition to the ones that have already been outlined in the guide. Uh, all living areas, including all gathering rooms and finished and unfinished basement areas, are now required okay so be very careful particularly with the last part there finished and unfinished basement areas uh, a lot of appraisers will excuse me need to be uh, reminded that that they have to take pictures of the unfinished areas um, we often get pictures of the finished uh, or we get pictures of one living area but maybe they have a living area a living room maybe they have a den maybe they have a hearth room uh, all sorts of types of rooms in the house. So all of those are going to have to be documented. All right, and that takes us to the end of that little, <clears throat> little uh, piece of information between uh, the February updates with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Uh, we have five little pieces of advice that I just want to share with you that we see constantly, okay? Number one, You'll never get in trouble using two years of taxes, but you can get in trouble for only using one year. OK, there has been an update recently uh, and we've had this discussion with with many lenders and many of you on this call where there is a five year window between using one year of taxes and using two years of taxes. Uh, this can be easily uh, identified on a 1065 or an 1120S as the start date is at the very top of those business taxes. However, if you have somebody that's self-employed and a Schedule C, uh, if you've done this job for long, you know that the Schedule C does not have a start date on it. You will need to get third party confirmation with a business license or get additional years of taxes going back five years. And if you're doing that anyway, my friends, you should probably just go ahead and use two years of taxes anyway because you have them in your possession. So. Uh, when in doubt, if you have no idea what to do, maybe it's a little confusing, always use two years of taxes just to avoid troubles down the road. When in doubt, always use the lowest income calculation. Uh, we run into this 
and uh, people want to get borrowers qualified. We all understand that borrowers uh, need to get qualified. We want to qualify the borrowers. We want to help somebody uh, with a loan. We want to help them get into a house or purchase a property. However, we have to be very careful here. Uh, in this market, we are living in an auditor's paradise, and you do not want to send in a loan where we have the lowest income calculation on an income calculator and we just choose to ignore it because well i you know on this last paycheck that he got you know this one was higher and we think that this is going to be what he gets going forward that's not always the best way to do that so if you're ever in doubt use your income calculator and please use the lowest income calculation for the conservative estimate this is one of my favorites that we're running into lately, just because an appraisal is marked as is does not mean that it should be, okay? And this <laughs> does not, uh, this is not out there to hurt your uh, feelings if you're an appraiser or if you have a best friend that is an appraiser. This is just what we see very often uh, come across the, the underwriter's desk here. Lots and lots and lots and lots of appraisals that are marked as is, and they should not be. They are not completed. Uh, they have deferred maintenance that is structural or has a safety issue. I had one that was marked as is, and the chimney was about to fall down on top of the house the other day. That is not not acceptable, okay? Don't do that, okay? Just because an appraisal is marked as is does not mean that it should be. Complete documentation equals less touches on the file for everyone. Uh, we all want to touch a file as few times as possible, okay? It seems sometimes like the underwriter wants to touch it as many times as possible and we just wanna ask for everything under the sun and then we get it back and you send in conditions and you're like, this is great. I did such a good job on these conditions and then we send you back more conditions. You're like, why didn't I tell everybody everything? So just understand that a lot of these things um, are because we don't have complete documentation. For instance, with, with income, you know, if you send in a file to be looked at, you say, hey, this is ready to go to the underwriter and you don't have W-2s in the file, or you don't have all of the taxes for self-employed borrowers. Let's say uh, somebody needs a K-1, or you've got the K-1, they don't provide the business taxes, or they provide the business taxes, but they don't have the personal taxes. Uh, things like that are what I'm talking about here. So complete documentation equals less touches on the file for everyone. When there's less touches, things get done quicker. You can close faster. Everybody's happier, including your borrower. And the last one, if every file is a rush file, then no file <laughs> is in fact a rush file. So um, sometimes you do have a rush file. Everybody understands that. Everybody should understand that. Sometimes things happen. Sometimes you're working within a very tight window. Everybody that's in this business understands that. However, if everything that you send to somebody in particular has the exclamation point on it, or it says rush, or it says urgent, then it's kind of like the boy who cried wolf, it, it, but you become numb to it, okay? So uh, everybody is glad to help. I know I'm glad to help whenever I can, or if somebody's in a crunch. However, just be very cautious doing this uh, for everybody, and we, we, we should be good, okay? Uh, it's been a pleasure talking with you today. This is uh, something that I, I put together. It's meant to just be really quick. We have a lot of people on the call. So what I've asked Martin to do is to just follow up with everybody. If you have questions about any of this stuff or you have questions about how we do underwriting here at Commonwealth or how we can possibly help you uh, underwrite your files or anything like that, we are glad to talk to you. We're glad to explain everything and we'll show you uh, our simple way of doing things that can get you in and out of files in a hurry and do it very accurately, okay? Uh, Martin, I'll turn it back over to you, and it's a pleasure talking with you all, and hopefully we'll be in contact soon. Thanks, Wes. Uh, Shelly Caps over at Guarantee Bank uh, sends her compliment. She says you're amazing. Hey, Shelly. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thank you again for spending your afternoon with us or your lunch break with us. Um, for those of you that currently do work with us, we we thank you for your business. And for those of you all that do not currently work with us, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, we'd love to get our hands on that tough file. 
uh, that may be coming down your pipeline that you you may be a little confused on, or if you're running a, scare, a skeleton crew in your operations, like I know a lot of folks unfortunately have to right now, uh, we'd love to be that contingency plan for you in, in case uh, your folks do want to take a vacation or something like that and take a little time off. We'd love to to fill up the gap there. But um, like like Wes said, if you guys have questions, um, I'll drop my email address in the chat box here. I'll follow up with everybody as well. In a couple of days, I'll send in this uh, slide deck out as well, just to make sure everybody has it. And um, you know, our inboxes are always open. Our phone lines are always open. Like I said, we love to hear from everybody. And uh, right now, it's more important than ever to kind of band together and and uh, kind of put our heads together and get through these tough times. So we're we're always open to help and assist however we can. So thanks again for joining us, Wes. Thanks for putting all this together. I thought it was very informative. Sure, absolutely. Thanks, everyone. All right, everybody. Have a great day. Great week.